You ready to do some bounty hunting? What the hell is that thing? Oh, that's the. Fiends the... are running for the. Shut lives. up! That's the gun he made for us that I never actually tested. Yes, Doctor Disaster's custom weapon. Yep. Hello, courier. Ironic, isn't it? I am bringing a message to the messenger. What I... message? Well, it's Felix Cortez. We've been killing your assassins for weeks now. Yeah, is he the one that's been sending them? I, I believe so. Whatever. What message? My employer says that the initial harassers were just the first designed to test you. I'm sorry, speak English. I am here to end you, to end this. I will return your head to him and it will be mounted on the wall. A trophy to the futility of defiance. What? That is my message. I think he's making threats towards you. Chinga de pendejo! You just said a bunch of words in Spanish, you have no idea what they mean. If he can speak fake English at me, I can speak fake Spanish. Whoa. Watch out! Whoa. You, you want me to contribute to this firefight? Yes, please. Oh, are we killing these guys? Oh, it was pulse slugs. Hang on, hang on. Give me just a second, guys. Ammo here. Oh, he body blocked! Kind of. Come on. Please, just give me a minute. What kind of- is it a- oh, that's a sound so much. It's a 9 mil. No! No! You made me break it! <laughs> <laughs> Die already! Oh my god, he has so much health. Wow, that suit's Whoa. armored, huh? You like that? <laughs> ah, yes! Oh, this is much more effective. I could go for a new Coca-Cola. I don't even know what that means, but it's a 9mm suppressed submachine gun. Wow, it holds 180 rounds. That is not even humanly possible. Yes, and most of us didn't die in the attack. Hooray! Hooray! Yeah, everything's definitely... Oh, we knocked all those books off the shelf that were so <laughs> carefully placed. Oh, what's in this drink? Beer, if you're lucky. Radiation, most likely. It almost sounds like they're trying to kill us. <laughs> and we're paying customers. <laughs> Uh, I I just slept through that literal entire thing. Ike does not care. Just I don't know who Ike is, but he slept through literally that entire. Wow, this place got messed up. The bartender's not going to be happy when he gets out of his coma. Hold out, Land Devil. I, Talking Knife, have followed you for days, oh, for waiting sake. to give you my message. <laughs> Hear my words. You did nothing when the dog Glanton came to our camp, and every one of my kin fell under his blade. But that happened so long ago. I have come to kill you. Then I will kill the dog Glanton. Then I will have a good death. Um, it's Talking Knife's twin sister, Talking Knife. She's come here to avenge the death of her tribe, and also her sister. Yeah, you should be going after Glanton, not me. Also, everybody forgot about Glanton because he's really forgettable. Glanton next, you first! D.I.U. devil! Yeah, it didn't work on her either. Oh my god. How many fights are we gonna get into in this bar? <laughs> One more than this guy. <laughs> hey, bartender! Barkeep! As we're done with the fiends, Barkeep. we'll kill anyone who resists Wake up! for peace. I don't think I'm All getting right. drunk fast enough for my liking. Ooh. Maybe the alcohol here is watered down. Watered down whiskey should be a crime. You need laws to have crime. Otherwise, it's just a screw job. Things are getting stranger every day. We're gonna do some bounty hunting today, and Hooray! Russell's gonna be joining us since he has information on the bounties. Russell, you've got to change your clothes, though. Seriously, you can't be wearing the same uniform as me. Why not? We can't all be wearing the same uniform. Then we look like we're part of a military organization. Then we can be tried as war criminals. <laughs> Fair do point. Do you want that? No, well, I would definitely not want that. Yes, I would rather be tried as just a common criminal and go to prison than a war criminal and be hung at the Hague. There you go. See that little thing on the top of it? The little <laughs> curved portion that's kind of sticking the wrong direction? Mm-hmm. That's a safety. That's a weird way to have a safety. Yeah. The safety mechanism literally is the dust cover that you close it and it keeps things from getting in there and it also keeps the bolt from moving forwards. Neat. Also, there's no charging handle on this submachine gun. You just shove your finger into the ejection port and pull the bolt back. You don't need to charge it. It's not an energy weapon. Loading handle, Mike. <laughs> you want to debate guns for a while with someone who doesn't know anything about guns? Or you want to do some bounty hunting? Fine, let's do some bounty hunting. <laughs> Russell, what the... <laughs> wow! 
What were you throwing? You threw like six grenades <laughs> at a thing over here. What were you throwing them at? Oh my god, Russell. It's definitely dead though. Yeah, that was totally worth throwing all those. Russell, you want to get a picture of you with your kill? <laughs> you idiot. Good day, sirs. Good day. My darling, how I love you. What can I do for you, young man? Where are you from? California originally, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. I grew up in the Tehachapi Mountains. It's a beautiful, peaceful place. My old man was a rancher and made a good living at it, too. He wanted me to get in the family business, but I was young and foolish, so I left. Sometimes I wish I stayed up in those mountains, fat and happy with some farmer's daughter at my side. <laughs> yeah, but who the fuck am I kidding? I could never stand to be in one place for too long. Besides, I'd have blown the family fortune on whores and booze. My brother stayed on to run the farm, but I ain't heard from him in years. He's a bossy little fuck, so I'd have probably shot him if I went back. Sounds like you've got problems at home. Good thing you came out in the middle of a desert. So why are you running the jail? Is it because you're running from other things? Because the brass fucked me, that's why. My ass is past retirement, but some colonel you stop lost to keep me running his shitty little jail. Mm. The truth is, we're spread thin, so any combat-ready rangers and troops, they're already deployed to the forward areas. I am very familiar with being stop-lost. Basically, I'm stuck here until the war ends or I drop dead. It's hardly ideal, but I'm determined to make the best out of it. How many months were you stop-lost? More than 15. Oh, I mean, how many years were you stop-lost? We came in here waving the banner and expecting to mold the Mojave into our own image. That ain't exactly the case. This war has turned the Mojave into a wound, and it's attracting every manner of vermin out there. The old guard is dead, thanks to you and to Randall. Yeah. But now, now there's a new breed. No sense of restraint. No sense of humanity. But they ain't afraid of anything or anyone. And they only answer to force. And that is where you come in. Somebody's got to put that fear into them. The kind of fear that twists your spine and makes you hesitate, even if only for a moment. Most of them already know your name. They'll be coming for you. But you ain't like the others, are you? Nah. Something is driving you. It doesn't matter if it's greed, if it's hate, or a sense of justice. You just hold on to it. You're gonna need it. Lost for violence. I should leave. And by I should leave, I mean I'm gonna talk to you right now. What can I do for you, young man? I'd like to apply for a bounty hunting license, please. <laughs> All right. There isn't really an application. It's more of a briefing. We're trying to bring law and order to these parts. I don't really care if you like the NCR or not. Just bring in the bad guys and you'll get paid, plain and simple. Cool. Now, if that's an acceptable arrangement, I'll have your license ready in a moment. We're not in it for the money. We, we found 50 gold bars recently. We're in it for the adventure! Yeah, and for the means to kill legally. If you've got the guts, it's easy money. One thing, though. Unlike these mercenary firms, we do pay higher for live bounties. I understand that you can't talk everyone down, so we also pay for fingers. However, you're giving up cash if you always go in guns blazing. In order to assist you with getting these live bounties, I'm going to issue you a bounty collar, which is just a modified slave collar. This little device goes around their neck. When you manage to talk them down or coerce them, slap this on. If they stray off course, it will start prodding them with a nice dose of electricity. If they head for the hills, it'll fry their ass. So it's a slave collar. Take my word for it, it ain't pretty. Once you get it on, they won't wander. And when they turn themselves in, just come in and claim the bounty. You'll find bounty posters scattered throughout the territory. If there's a poster, we've got the paperwork on them, so just bring them in. That's pretty much it. Here's the collar and your license. Come back if you have any questions, and happy hunting. I like how simple this is. What do you want? What's your name? I'm Lieutenant John Ramsey. Don't call me John, LT, or any other shit. To you, I'm just Lieutenant. Okay, LT. You got it, butter bar. No offense, but you don't strike me as an officer. Despite the butter bars, I'm still an enlisted man in my heart of hearts. I earned a battlefield commission a few years back. I just happened to be one of the last surviving souls at a place called Firebase Zulu. Ah, Zulu. It's a remote outpost south of the Mojave. I don't remember Zulu. The colonel was another political appointment with his head up his ass. 
Patrols and reconnaissance warned him for weeks, but he was oblivious. That CO even detailed engineers to install creature comforts in his bunker, when they should have been fortifying the perimeter. He insisted that we were in a reinforced observation post. Of course, when the Legion hit us, it was a goddamn nightmare. It was a night assault, and they were so damn fast. We were practically overran in a matter of moments. Overrun, but yeah. We managed to counterattack and push them out of the perimeter. But the casualties were terrible. They kept us under siege for seven days until we were relieved. I saw a lot of good men and women die. Between the snipers, mortars, and constant assaults, we dwindled down to less than 50 fighting men. Down from 300 at the start. Wow. In that kind of situation, a staff sergeant could become a lieutenant real quick. I certainly wasn't in a position to refuse the promotion. After that fiasco, I made up my mind to never allow any dumb fuck CEO to endanger the lives of my men, come hell or high water. And in the process of sticking it to my last commander, I found myself in this little shack with the retirees, doing police work, and that's that. That is the negative consequence of talking back to your superiors, but it sounds like you had a good reason for it. Sounds like a good lieutenant. So you got a problem with bounty hunters? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe fuck yourself. If Captain Skull would let me off the hook, I'd kill every one of these bastard criminals. Alright, go crazy. If you're looking to talk shop, just hit me up. I write and update the files for those scumbags you're chasing so I can give you information. Unless you think I have a problem with bounty hunters, of course. Well, now I know why you're angry, so I don't need to ask that. Here's a hint. I'm in a half-assed duty station handling drunks, fuck-ups, and criminals when I should be with a combat unit. Reason enough. You need to stop being so depressed because there are literally people stationed at Fort Polk right now. Are you are you angry about anything? You don't have a reason to. There's people stuck at Fort Polk right now. You're gatekeeping depression, are you? Mm-hmm. Hmm. There is no reason to be angry about anything ever because you are not at Fort Polk. Gatekeeping! Fort Polk is the worst place ever. Gatekeeper! There is nothing worse than Fort Polk. They call him the gatekeeper. I don't even know what the hell you're saying. Why are you depressed, John Ramsey? Are you from Fort, Fort Polk? Polk? No, I grew up in New Mexico. and got nothing else to say, so don't ask. Come on, what's the big deal? We just want to know who we're working with here. Fucko, I'm not telling you shit. I don't ask about your dirty secrets or say that scar on your head. Why? Because it's none of my damn business. Do I have a scar on my head? Not from when you got shot. That's already healed up, but you cracked that egg on your nose and that scar oh, never left. Oh, right. I forgot about that one. So why are you stationed here? In subordination. Striking a superior officer. Conduct unbecoming. That about sums it up. Okay. The limp dick CO at my last duty station had it coming. That incompetent fuck was getting my men killed, so I acted. So you've mentioned, yes. The brass would have shit all over me if they could, but old Skull put in a good word, and my combat record means something in wartime. Damn straight. They could chew you up, but sooner or later they have to spit you out, right? Or they could just keep chewing until their jaw gets tired. Yep. What? What's your story? I got raised rough. Ended up in a jam. So I joined up. Drank too much. Pissed off some pussified top. Landed in this shithole. Goddamn pogue motherfuckers. <laughs> yep. Welcome to the Mojave. Yeah. How do you like working in this jail? One time I was detailed to burning human shit. And that might have been worse. Might have? That might have been worse. Mm. What's your opinion of the war? Tell me, what is your opinion on the Legion and NCR? Uh, why do you always want to know these things? You don't? I don't! I don't care what people think about the Legion and NCR! Shut up, I do! I heard somebody say, war never changes. Uh, what a bunch of bullshit. Give me a tactical nuke, and I'd change this motherfucker real quick. <laughs> Settle down there, Curtis LeMay. You know what I'd do? I'd take a deal in crawfish... Then drill that old Caesar in the ass. Caesar's got a hard on for that damn. He has some giant retard with a metal mask supposed to win it. Tailgate Lingus or something. <laughs> One day we shall confront and defeat Tailgate Lingus. Yes, excellent. What do you think of Mr. House? He's some kind of freak. Living in a tower. Keeping piss in bottles and drinking it. 
fucking disgusting. I must get going. And a farewell to you, too. Mongol Kid! The Mongol Kid! Subject name, unknown. Alias, the Mongol Kid. Date of birth, Charlie. Jurisdiction, Boulder City. Age, male. Allegiance, former Khan. Leads an offshoot called the Mongols. Charges, aggravated assault, position of jet. Yeah, he's a drug dealer. Map. Not kidnapping, what? kidnapping, kidnapping, murder, extortion, kidnapping, 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 murder, extortion, stealing a bicycle, kidnapping, kidnapping, 250 caps alive, 100 dead. Once a valued member of the cons, the Mongol kid recently left the gang to form a radical splinter group known as the Mongols. <laughs> radical! Their primary pursuits are drug trafficking, kidnapping, and gun running. The kid is reputed to be a charismatic leader, although sources within the cons are skeptical of his abilities, citing a lack of physical courage. One informant indicated that the Mongols are operating near the site of Lone Wolf Radio. The Mongol kid has personally overseen the kidnapping of at least a half dozen individuals, usually taken from families with property. Ransom was paid in five cases. One victim, a child, was returned alive, while the other four, not children, were murdered despite payment by the victim's family. Ooh, so he's not a very good ransomer. The Mongol kid is basically robust and rumored to be adept with the bumper sword and other melee weapons. So he's a pushover. You should be able to take him out pretty easy. Just bring anything that has a reach of more than, I don't know, six feet. <laughs> Nonetheless, rumors indicate he has a limited tolerance for pain. So inflicting injuries might prompt him to surrender. Hmm, okay, there we go. We could get more money if we torture him with gunfire a bit. I guess we'll try to take this guy in alive. We'll tell him that I have diplomatic immunity and he can't do anything. If you're diplomatically immune, then I guess there's no point in trying diplomacy, huh? No, no, I mean, he can only use diplomacy on me. Th then that's not diplomatic immunity, that's gunfire immunity. Hello, Mongol kid, are you home? We are very eager to talk to you. Knock that- You're dead, and you don't even know it. Oopsies, my finger slipped! <laughs> Man, Dr. D did a great number on this thing. Oh, this is just a sentry. Rick! Stay alert while I'm out with the patrol. We're lucky to have found this place, so I want to make the best of it. We're going to inspect the Good Spring source and see if we can't nab a captive while conducting reconnaissance. Anyway, keep a lookout for that boogeyman bounty hunter everyone's talking about. It doesn't take much to knock off some fiends, but still, they say he, or was it her, took out the judge. So don't fuck around, okay? M. Oh, I guess they're here. <laughs> oh, it was an ambush of sorts. Don't worry, we'll survive. Wow! Unless Russell uses grenades. Oh, is this the Mongol kid? Well, it's, oh no, it's just a Mongol. It's a Mongol gang member. Oh, we can't collect fingers if they're ashes and goo piles. I didn't ah, think of great. this. We're gonna have to take Russell's grenades away. Well, you say that, but he's killed very many of them with little effort. Oh, hello. Hey. You killed all your friends. Hey, hey, you know hey! Everybody okay? All right, guys, don't kill the Mongol kid immediately. Which one is the Mongol kid? Is it this hostile Jagoff? Had enough? Open wide, motherfucker. Hello, I'd like to talk. Please talk. He's, he's not in a talking mood. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna let you wail on Russell for a Okay, fine, fine. No, we'll wail on me. That's fine. Do Russell, I have beanbag rounds? Russell doesn't care. Hey, I do. Let's knock him unconscious. Cut your fucking heart out. Russell, are you looking at your phone? <laughs> Ow, stop. There we go. Oh, I don't think I can... You did not just throw a grenade at me. Oh, he's unconscious and not hostile. Let's wait for him to wake up. Hello, I'd like to talk to you, please. Hold it. Please, I'm hurt bad. I surrender. I'll turn myself in. Damn. Just don't hurt me anymore. Really? I'm gonna put this collar on you, so you turn yourself in at the Boulder City Jail. Otherwise, it'll keep zapping you. Like, repeatedly. Forever. And you won't like that, unless it's your fetish. We'll assume it's not your fetish. Here you go. Oh, fuck. You're not kidding? Shit, just give me the collar. I'll put it on right now. Just don't hurt me anymore. It's already on. Bye! I- Bye! <laughs> I can't believe our first bounty was- not just completed, but a success! Yes! I'm a good bounty hunter! I... I had my doubts, but I don't anymore. Yes! All I had to use was beanbag rounds to knock him unconscious. Yes! Let's report in and tell Larry Skrull of our success. Woohoo! What can I do for you, young man? 
you probably saw somebody come in recently. Hmm. Yeah. That crybaby couldn't turn himself in fast enough. <laughs> Wouldn't shut up about his damn injuries. Wasn't much more than the flesh rune, really. I wonder the cons wouldn't have him. He was just a big pussy all along. Probably. Anyway, he got sentenced to 30 years, which means he's going to end up somebody's bitch. It's refreshing for an old-timer like me to see these young punks brought to justice. Yeah. Good work. I'm honestly surprised the NCR keeps people in jails for 30 years. Me too. I can't tell you how many of them died out there. Working to feed the damn legion. I remember what the Overseer would say to us after someone died. To keep you is no benefit. To destroy you is no loss. 